Hi, my name is Christopher Gillum. I'm an American knife maker. And in this video, we're going to show how to make a file guide. This tool right here in my hand, this is a simple file guide. And in this video, we're going to show how to make a file guide. Step by step. It's be interesting to somebody. So to make this carbide um, file guide, here's the materials we're going to use. A piece of pea stock, two stop pins, um, five thirty seconds, two number eight by thirty two screws, and two pieces of carbide. This is about uh, eighth inch thick, five sixteenths wide, and over three inches wide. This is the materials we're going to use to make this file guide. <clears throat> now let's take this key stock to the bandsaw and let's get started. So what I'm doing here is I'm going to cut the key stock to the correct length. I'm just going to very quickly put a chamfer on the corners here where I cut it on the bandsaw. Just going to chamfer the ends of this T stock. So this key stock is uh, 5 sixteenths, it measures 312, so we're going to go half of that, it should be 156, so we're going to bring up 156 thousandths, lock that down, we'll give ourselves a center line, there's our center line, Now, I'm going to come in 328. I'm come in 328. And I'm going to come in 600. So what I've done here is I've come in, let's make it focus on this, there it is. So what I've done is I've come in, this is the center of a 156 stop pin, and this is the center of an 8 by 32 bolt. And I left a 16th of an inch of material between the two. This is my center punch, this is an optical center punch, it's a precision tool. Very simply I'm going to look through the glass. And inside that glass is a set of crosshairs. I don't know if you can see that or not. Take out my sight glass, put in my center punch. There I've center punched directly on top of the crosshairs. These are the tooling I'm going to use for this operation. I'm going to use a center drill. I'm also going to use a number 29, 136. This is for the number eight pre-tap size. I'm using an eight by 32 tap. We're going to assemble this with, we're going to use a number eight by 32 socket head bolt. This is a number 161. This is the pass-through size for the number eight 
socket head. This is a 1760 force. This is for the bolt head to recess into the key stock. And this is a 147. That's the undersize for the pre-ream of a 532nd stop pin. And of course, I'm using a 532nd reamer. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to center drill on our punch marks. And then we're going to take a 147 and we're going to drill and ream and put the stop pin to hold the two halves of key stock together. This is a number three center solid carbide. The first thing we do is I'm going to center drill these. So we see I've clamped the two key stock together and now I'm going to use a number 25. This is a 147. This is the undersize for a 530 second stop pin. I will now ream this hole. I now will ream this hole with a 532nd reamer. So we can now take these apart. We said I did not drill all the way through of the second half. I will now ream this hole. This is a 532nd straight flute reamer. I've now reamed this hole. I'm going to use a larger size drill bit to chamfer this. And I have now reamed this hole to receive a 532nd stop pin. I've changed the drill bit to a 059,000. So we're now going to drill the through hole all the way through the bottom of the 147 hole. This will allow the glue to escape the bottom of this um, stop pin. This is only done on the blind hole side. So I've drilled a 59 thousandths hole in the bottom of the 147. This is to allow the glue to escape the bottom of the blind hole side. I will now press fit this pin so I went ahead and I chamfered this hole and the back side and I blew it out with there, get it all cleaned out. We're now going to glue in this pin. I'm going to glue in this stop pin. We've now glued in the stop pin. We'll, the, we'll put the two halves together, clamp it, and now we're going to install the pin on this other side. So with the stop pin in the back and the clamp holding this parallel, I've returned to the 147. We're now going to drill this all the way through. Now we want to ream this bottom half. This is the bottom half. We're now going to ream this hole. So I'm going to chamfer this quickly. Put a forward ream. Turn to the 532nd reamer.
I'm now going to chamfer the bottom side of the hole. And we're going to put the stop pin in this hole. The two stop pins are glued in, everything's held in alignment. All I'm going to do now is just use the platen, the flat platen, to square up the ends of the key stock. this with the band saw so I can put a screwdriver in there to pry these two halves apart. I'm now going to recess the head of this bolt using a 1764. So I've recessed this to receive the head of the socket head screw. I'm going to do this other side. Socket head bolt. And I'll change this to the smaller size drill bit. So I opened up these holes to receive the 8x32 socket head bolt. The next thing I'm going to do is change to a number 29. This is a number 29, this is a 136. I'm going to let this drill all the way through so that the bottom and the top will be perfectly aligned when I tap this. And then later we'll open these up to the number eight pass through size. This is a 161. This is the pass through size for the number eight bolt. And so I have drilled this with a 161 to open it up as a pass through for my number eight bolt. The next thing we wanna do is we wanna chamfer the underside of these holes. 
And we also want to chamfer where we're about to tap. And chamfer these holes we're about to tap. So the last thing we want to do is chamfer the bottom of the tapped holes. And now for the final test, we'll see if these will thread in. The next process is we're going to face these with carbide. So all the drilling operations are complete. Uh, the next thing I want to do is I want to flatten one surface of this before I glue on the carbide. And so let's go to the disc sander and do that. I'm going to be using a magnet. This is just a earth magnet that's in a Ziploc. I'm going to use this for a handle. I'm going to use a disc sander to flatten this foul guide before I glue the carbide on. I'd like to see a review of this disc sander. I do have that on my YouTube channel. The overall length of this carbide fell guide is 4 inches, 600 thou. If we're going to take half that, this should be 2 inches, 300 thou. Let's pull up 2 inches here. Carbide measures three inches and eighty five thousandths. So we're going to go three inches, eighty five, uh, about two, and fifty four. So there's an inch, five hundred thousandths, and forty. So just a piece of paper I'm going to stick in here. I clean this with simple green. And very simply, I'm going to line my center marks. I'm going to glue that down. This is the glue I'm going to use. Originally, I brazed these on using black flux, but this time I'm going to use this industrial adhesive. I'm using a popsicle stick and this industrial adhesive.
And now we're going to get, let this dry for about 24 hours. Here's our completed carbide thaw guide. Again, this glue had dried for 24 hours. Uh, this glue takes up to 72 hours before it comes up to full strength. So we want to wait at least three days before we grind with this thing. As far as the dimensions of the max capabilities of it, <clears throat> on the width, I have 360 thousandths. So you can very easily put a quarter inch thick stock in this to grind. And as far as the full widthness of the blade, you can grind screw to screw. I have three inches, 250 thou. So you can grind up to a three inch blade in this, no problem. And it's lightweight and it's not very heavy. I didn't weigh it. So there it is, it's completed. And the way you will use this thing is you'll put your blade stock in there, decide how you want your plunge line. It can either be forward or back. Personally, I like it slanted to match my handle. And then you wanna clamp that down. And tighten the screws, this will clamp this onto the blade. And now when you grind this on the 2x72 grinder, your plunges absolutely will be symmetrical. Everything is held in alignment because of the stop pins. And so this carbide will prevent the 2x72 belt from grinding any further past where the carbide is. This works so much better than tape or Sharpie lines. If you're going to grind anything at all, I'd highly recommend you make a file guide. Thank you guys so much for watching all the way through. Thank you for your patronage and your support. And if you want me to make you one of these, just email me. If I have the time, on, I might make a batch of these. Uh, I am going to include a set of plans for the patrons. The link is in the description. Um, if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do so. New content is coming out. I'm making content as much as I possibly can. I am a one-man shop. I don't have much free time. Thank you guys for everything. Thank you for your patronage. Stay healthy. Stay sharp. And I'll see you guys in the very next video.